Blood hot on her hands. Red. The brightest red Galia had ever seen. Her mind tilted. Her vision disappearing down a black tunnel. No, don't faint. She gasped, pull air in, and with a copper smell that went to her stomach and grabbed it like a fist. Bile rose to her throat. She swallowed. The man's legs shook as she tried to withdraw the shard of glass, a strip of bedsheet wrapped around one end to form a grip for the improvised knife. She jerked. His eyes gapped. She twisted, feeling the glass grind against the hardness deep inside his neck until something snapped. The blade slipped free of the new mouth it had opened beneath his chin. Red bubbled from it and spread across his Lithuania football shirt, swamping the bright yellow. Galia stepped back as the blood advanced across the linoleum towards her bare feet. It licked at her toes, warm kisses from the dying man who slid down the wall as his eyes dimmed. A scream rushed up from her belly, but she clamped her free hand over her mouth, trapped it behind her teeth. The hand was slick on her lips, and then she tasted it. Galia's gut flexed, and vomit streamed between her fingers. Her legs dissolved, the floor came at her like a train. She sprawled in the wetness and the heat, tried to scramble away from it, but it was too slippery against her bare skin. The scream came again, and this time she could not hold it back. Even though she knew it would kill her, Galia let it burst free. A terrified bird escaping from the cage of her chest. The howl dragged every last swallow of air from her lungs. She inhaled, coughed, breathed in again, brought her mind back under control. Galia listened through the rushing in her ears. Silence, save for the choked bubbling from the man's throat. Then a knock on the bedroom door. Tears came to her eyes, frightened little girl tears, but she blinked them away. She was not a little girl. Hadn't been since Papa died almost a decade ago. Think, think, think! The glass blade still rested in her blooded finger. The tip was missing, the rag grip soaked through. Maybe she could keep them back. They would see their dead friend and know she could do the same to them. Another knock. Louder, the door handle rattled. Thomas! Fear cut through her. No, she could not keep them back with this piece of glass. Again, the urge to weep. She pushed it away once more. Thomas! The voice slurred out some more words. She knew a little Lithuanian, but not enough to understand the drunken questions coming from the other side of the door. Are you alright in there? Another voice. The English spoken with the hard twang of this strange, cold place. Don't believe in any marks on that girl, man! How many were there? Galia had listened to the voices as they arrived. Two spoke Lithuanian, one of whom now lay beside her on the floor. The other spoke English with an accent strong enough for her to hear that he was indeed Irish. One of the two brothers, she thought. After a week of listening to their conversations through the locked door, she had learned one was named Mark and the other Sam. Only one of them was here tonight. Thomas! A fist hammered the wood. Listen, stop fucking about in there! I'm going to kick this door and if you don't come out I'll open it! Galia got to her knees and up on her feet, the air chilling the wetness on her stomach and thighs. The plain grey sweatshirt and pair of jogging bottoms they'd given her lay on the dressing table. She grabbed them, juggled the glass from hand to hand, as she pulled them on, feeling the fabric stick to the blood. The door rattled with each thump, beyond it another Lithuanian cursed. For fuck's sake! The Irishman said. Galia blinked as the door jerked in its frame, the noise booming in the bedroom. She backed towards the corner, gripping the glass knife in front of her. Another boom, and the light bulb swayed and its cord above her head. She wedged herself into the angle where two walls meet. 
the glass quivered in front of her eyes. She prayed to her grandmother, the woman who had always protected her and her brother since they had been orphaned. The old woman had been Mama to them as long as Galia could remember. Now Mama lay in the ground hundreds of miles away where she could no longer give protection. Galia prayed to Mama's departed soul even though she did not believe in such things. She prayed that Mama would look down on her granddaughter and take pity. Oh please Mama, come down and take me away please. Oh Mama, to the door burst inwards slammed against the wall and bounced back. The Lithuanian blocked it with his shoulders as he entered. The Irishman followed. They stopped when they saw the dead man. The Lithuanian made the sign of the cross. The Irishman said, Fuck me. Galia shrank into the corner, made herself as small as she could, as if they wouldn't see her cowering in there. The Lithuanian cursed, and shook his head. His eyes were watering. He rubbed his big hand across his lips. Jesus, Darius, is he dead? Look like this. What do we do? Darius shook his head. I, I, I don't know. Sam, Galia was sure that it was Sam. Fuck me, Sam said. We all did. What? Arturas. He killed us both. <laughs> he, your brother also. But we didn't... No matter. We all did. Darius pointed a thick finger at the corner. Because of her. Sam turned to look at Galia. She raised the glass blade to cut the air in front of her. Why you do those things? Darius asked, his face slack with despair. She hissed, the glass sweeping in an arc at his eye level. Don't waste your breath. She doesn't speak English. Galia understood every word. She choked back a giggle at the deception, felt her mind flutter like a flag in the wind, ready to tear itself free. For a moment, she thought she might let it go, let insanity carry her away, but Mama had not raised her to give in so easily. She bared her feet and showed them the blade again. And what are you going to do? Sam asked. Get rid of him, the Lithuanian said. Sam's eyes brightened. What, dump him? We say Arturas. Your brother came here. Take her out of this place, no come back. Arturas asked where we go. We say we know nothing. Uh, will he believe us? We say real thing, we dead. Arturas don't believe, we dead also. W what different? Sam nodded at the corner. And what about her? What do you think? Sam blinked and stared at him. Cool. The Lithuanian stepped aside. Take Stiklas from her. Take what of her? Stiklas, stick, no, Stiklas, you know, glass, take, take glass from her. Sam approached, hands up. Easy, love, take it easy. Galia slashed at him, almost caught his forearm. Fight! Darius pushed him back. Take from her! Wait, shot, you get it from her! The Lithuanian cursed and bullied his way past. Galia swiped the glass blade through the air in front of him, but he caught her wrist in one easy movement. He twisted once, hard, and the blade dropped to the floor. His thick arms naked around her throat, and she smelled leather and cheap aftershave with her last breath before everything fell away into darkness. She dreamed of Mama's coarse hands and warm bread and a time when she only knew Belfast as that wretched place they sometimes talked about at the radio. Thank you very much for listening to this chapter. If you enjoyed it, 
please don't forget to leave a thumbs up for this video and please share it with your friends. Also, remember to click that subscribe button to keep up to date with any other chapters and books that we're gonna upload. Share the power of reading and see you next time.